Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is Dmitry Bestuzhev. Uh, he heads up our uh, global research team in Latin America. And I brought Dmitry here to talk a little bit about uh, the cybercrime on the ground and some of the little intricate things that he is finding uh, as he is doing his research there. One of the big things that I notice uh, whenever I look at your res research and presentations is the fact that uh, there is so much a wealth of really, really uh, valuable private personal information that can lead to identity theft. Can you share with us what types of uh, data you're seeing on there and what are some of the risks involved with people's data being on these drop zones? Okay, yeah. So we basically we have all kind of information from, you know, starting with the credit cards like it was in the past. And now we have also information like gift cards from the most famous brands in the world. Right. From iTunes, Amazon. Right. Exactly. So we also have like things, you know, like passport data, which can basically use for cloning of the identity. And right. it's also like another kind of risk. It's not only about cyber risk. It's also about like our life risk. Like real, real life. Um, the the risk is not necessarily just cybercrime, but real crime. Right? Exactly. Do you see, is there like some sort of merger between traditional uh, criminals and cyber criminals? Are they, or are they organizing themselves together or, the, or is it just that they're sharing information? What, how, what kind of... Well, actually it's a really serious situation we are facing now because we are seeing like a really clear trend between, you know, like merging between cybercrime and the classic crime, they just exchange information. In many cases, cybercrime is covered or supported by classic crime. That means um, it's even like much more dangerous for many people, even for researchers. Right, because now, now you don't day. have to be on the internet and have a computer. You're still exactly. at risk because uh, traditional classic criminals are merging with these guys. Uh, is this, in your region, let's talk a little bit about Latin America. Uh, what, what are some, uh, are there specialization happening around malware, uh, malware development and cybercrime activity as it relates to Brazil versus Argentina, Peru, Ecuador? Yeah. Can you explain? Yeah, sure. Uh, in Brazil, basically, they want money and only money. So they make a lot of Trojan bankers. They don't want to control an infected machine. They just want to steal ones and that's it. It's like bye bye. Right. But meanwhile, in other countries like Argentina and Peru, the specialization is in creating of the botnets. They want to uh, keep, you know, like the control and monitoring of, the, of any infected machine and to see how can they steal maybe another kind of information, right. not only credit card information, but also some kind of credentials from emails and right, social right. networks. And the, the Banca Trojan, is, that, is, there, is there a, a, a component that comprises phishing and spam and everything? I mean, is it, how, how are these uh, Banca Trojans getting launched on machines? Are they using botnets to push it down or are they using social engineering? And yeah, you know, a lot of social engineering in Brazil, they do really like it, you know, like news. Like because it works. Thing. Yes, yeah. and people just, you know, they just click. So that is why they don't care about any advanced technique of infections. Everything is just, you know, like too classic. A lot of uh, social engineering phishing going via email and people clicking and then losing money. Do you have a, a big issue as we do in the United States and in parts of Europe? Do you have the same issue around social networking, the use of Facebook, the use of Orkut, for instance, in Brazil, or LinkedIn and Twitter? Do you see a lot of malicious activity in those specific regions yes. on, on the social networks? Yes. And what types of attacks are you seeing? You know, in many cases, it's uh, you know leading to bankers, you know, just uh, stealing that information we, we have just mentioned. But in the other cases, we saw also social networks are used in Latin America to spread advertisement of selling of uh, the financial information, stolen financial information. So we're just making, you know, any kind of advertisement there, like you can buy, you know, like stolen right, stuff. Right. So. Uh, Social networks is uh, that a really good platform for the criminals from the region for any kind of malicious activity. Right. How about uh, the the fight to stop cybercrime? Are there? Uh, how would you say law enforcement is the operation of law enforcement in Latin American region? Is does it work? Does it not work? What needs to be fixed? Can you give me a quick yeah. synopsis of what the legal situation is? It depends on each country. I think the best country in fighting cybercrime is Chile. Really? Yes. They have really like you know good laws, even specialized people inside of the police. Meanwhile, in in the other countries like uh, Brazil and others, unfortunately, the law current law used to fight cybercrime is a really old one from 1931. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. So it's like 
uh, long time ago. Are they willing to cooperate and share information and, and do investigations, or is it very difficult to get, for instance, a Brazilian police to do an investigation into uh, bank atrocities? Uh, well, actually, yes, they share information, but you know, mostly like inside of Latin America. Uh, meanwhile, it's uh, if it's about like sharing information with the other countries, not Spanish-speaking countries, it's a bit hard. Not only because of the legislation, but also language and things like that. You know, politics. So um, if it's something local, yeah, maybe we can say like, okay, we will investigate it quite well and we will have success. Meanwhile, it, if it's some international crime, unfortunately, it will not be so easy. Hopefully we get that fixed. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Thank you. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check out some of our other webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky. Mm -hmm.